The iconic M1 carbine and Garand rifles were the main infantry weapons for World War II and Korea. So if you're like me, you'd like to own one to perhaps honor your father or your grandfather who fought with it. The problem is they're expensive to buy and shoot. So maybe the next best thing is to own a replica. This rifle is an example of a commonly available kit that turns a Ruger 1022 into an M1 carbine replica. As you can see, the kit is very realistic. So in this video, I'll show you how to build this M1 replica and include some tips and tricks to make your replica even more realistic. So let's get started and first look at what comes in the kit. Okay, let's look at what's in the kit. I've laid out the kit here on the table. We'll go through the different components. The first thing let's talk about is the Beechwood stock. It uh, comes with two different barrel bands. One has a cutout for the original sight, so you can use the sights that came with the Ruger. Or if you're not going to use those and you're going to replace them with an optional sight, you can put this one on and it doesn't have the cutout. It's nice that it comes with both of those and they just fit right on the top right here. So the next things, this is just what comes with the, uh, the kit for the stock. There's some good options that are available. Uh, one is the strap and the oiler. This is made to fit into uh, this spot right here. It attaches here, allows you to then to take the strap and hook it on here with another uh, hook right here. Gives it a nice effect, so that's an optional, about 20 bucks, I think. I went ahead and ordered that. The second thing you can do is there's a lot of different sight options for this. I went with the TSR 100, which is sort of a GI type aperture sight. Replicates what the original one looks like. You take off the sight that you have here and you put this on. There's also an option for the original uh, style that came with the M1 and some other different ones. So uh, lots of choices there. You can decide which one you like the best. The final option that I went with was uh, something for the magazine. There's a clip on here that clips into the Ruger magazine and then it makes it replicate the original uh, M1 style so that when you put the the, when you put the uh, magazine here, it has a drop down and it gives you this magazine look similar to what you saw in the original M1. So those are basically what comes with the kit and the options. Um, there's one other final thing I want to talk to you about and that's the Beechwood stock. So I've moved in on a little closer shot so you can get a better look at this stock. It's something that's interesting about it that's not necessarily apparent when you place the order. And that's how red this stock is. So if you look at this stock in comparison to the stock that comes standard with the Ruger, you can see the Ruger's much more brown. This is very reddish. And it's a dark red to, um, they say, to replicate what you see on many modern or many M1s today. However, on the research I did in looking uh, at, at a tour of the, uh, the Army Museum and the Marine Corps Museum in Washington, they had uh, displays of M1s and they were all unstained. So the stock on an M1 is walnut, it was unstained and it just had um, a linseed or a tongue oil applied to it and it was brown. Not what has happened over the 80 years of aging, these things have turned more red. So, I think what I'm going to try to do is take um, one of these extra barrel bands and try to remove this stain and see if I can put more of a natural walnut stain on it to give it more of a, a natural brown color instead of this red. I can't say I'm really happy with it. So rather than doing it on this, I'll test it out on one of the barrel bands, see how well it works because I really like to get it to look more original than with this red hue that comes with it. Uh, I'll show you what the results of that test is and where we go from there in the next part of this video. Okay, let me show you the results of the test. I took one of the spare barrel bands that I had, used steel wool, coarse steel wool, like uh, this one right here. This was a grade zero zero, uh, and stripped off all the red that was there and got it down pretty much to uh, the, the beech wood. And then I, I had some stain left over. This is a, a cognac stain. It's 
kind of a light brownish, uh, but it has a red tint to it. And I put that on there, and I was able to give it much more of a of a brown hue to it that would be closer to what the original is. Here you can see it compared to uh, the reference stock here on the Ruger. Um, if I probably went with a walnut stain, it might even make it uh, less red and more brown. I might consider getting some of that stain, but you can see that's that's an effective way to be able to change the look of this, get it more back to the original. So what I think I'm going to do now is actually uh, do the same thing to the whole stock and the barrel barrel that band that I'm going to use, and we'll see how this thing looks. I'll get it all done, and we'll stain it, and I'll assemble the rifle. I'll show you how to assemble the rifle after I get that done. Okay, let's go on to the next part of the project. I've finished stripping the stock, got all that red paint that was on it off, put a polyurethane coat on and some uh, stain on it, and you can see that I think it really looks tremendously better. Uh, you got at least a wood effect to it, and I think it looks closer to the original. Mm -hmm. Now, you can see the stock is, the stain is still a little red. It was impossible to get all that red off, and I wasn't going to sand the whole thing down. Just using the, the coarse steel wool got most of it off. But when you take, take it away, it still um, looks more like a wood stock as opposed to that painted red that came with it. So I'm very happy with this look. So now we're ready to assemble. Um, what I did was I removed the gun from the stock. I went ahead and did the sights. There's two screws uh, work back here, very easy to do. The only tough part was a little bit was punching out the old sight. Needed to do that in a gun vise. Um, and I did put some lubricant on it before I took it out and that made a big difference. If you just follow the directions that come with the site, uh, it has all the tools and everything you need. It was pretty self-explanatory. The toughest part was punching out the old site. Got that done. So now we're ready to assemble it um, to see how the fit is. Goes in very easily, very nice. Well fit, well machined out, uh, very snug, tight fit there. Very impressed with that. So now let's put the uh, barrel on. Goes in very easily also. I'm keeping my old sight because I didn't want to take that out. So um, just held on with one screw here. And then the other screw would go in here. And we basically... Uh, Tighten those things up, put this on, and we're pretty close. So let me go ahead and tighten those screws up, and then we'll get a close-up of um, the strap assembly. Okay, I've got everything locked down tight now. The final step is to put on the strap and the magazine. Uh, I've got the magazine pre-set up with a loop here to be able to put it through the oiler. So I'm going to just feed it through here. Lock that down, make sure it's set up right, feed it back through here, put the oiler in there, pull this back tight so that that holds the strap in place. Then the last thing to do, step in the magazine. Now we're done. So I think we have a pretty nice looking rifle here. Uh, nice replica type look for the M1 and I'm extremely happy with how it looks. So I think the next step, take it out to the range. See how it does. Okay, we're out here at the gun range with my friend Bruce. He brought his uh, M1 carbine along, the real one for us. He got through the civilian marksmanship program. And what I wanted to do is just show you a comparison of these two right here. You can see they're very similar in size. Actually, maybe the 22 is a tad bit longer. Uh, they look very similar, uh, have a nice uh, feel for the replica. So actually very happy with how it looks. Uh, if you look at this one in particular, one of the things we were talking about earlier was the red, uh, that, uh, the red stock that came about because of the linseed oil sort of fading over the years and stuff. So you can see this one's turned red, but where the uh, stock has been worn away and stuff, it goes back to the original walnut. So you can see much more that it was this walnut prior to the oiling, uh, you know, fouling it and making it red. So I'm glad I took off that red and, and gave it more of a original stock look. So now let's do the fun part. Let's fire it. Okay.
Now comes the fun part. Let's see if we can hit some targets. All right, fire's nice, great kit. Uh, great thing to be able to have if you're looking for a replica. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Thanks.